If you are a CZ aficionado, as I am, stay tuned as I showcase a CZ pistol that just might interest you. According to CZ, the P10 Striker Fired Series sets a new standard in performance, reliability, and precision. Remarkable ergonomics deliver a natural feel and point of aim and a best in class trigger, making each shot crisp, smooth, and consistent. There's a model designed to suit your needs perfectly the subcompact P10S, the compact P10C, or the full size P10F. Additionally, models are available in optic ready, suppressor ready, or dual configurations. Today's presentation concerns itself with the P10C, a loaner from my son-in-law, who, in the past, has contributed several firearms for my review, and for which I am grateful. Since I am an old retired gent with taste for champagne, but who has a root beer budget. So, I'll get on with the review, starting with the specifications. When CZ introduced the P10 series, some folks thought, oh great, just what we need, more Glock clones. How wrong they are. While some may use a Glock pistol as a foundation for their comparison, it is a foundation built on shaky ground. The CZ P10C has enough merits to stand on its own, very firm ground. While there are similarities, after all, they are both pistols of the polymer frame, striker-fired nature. That is where the similarities end. So let me address the many features that the CZ P10C has to offer, beginning with that fine-looking front end. The slide and frame are both nicely beveled at the front end to accommodate ease in holstering the firearm, while deeply cut serrations in the nitride finish slide provide an excellent surface for the fingers to grab when racking the slide for chambering a cartridge or for press checking to see if a cartridge is chambered. The country of origin can be seen on the forward left side of the frame, while the right forward of the slide contains manufacturing markings and a serial number. The bottom of the frame at the front has the manufacturer's number, part number, and serial number, just to the rear of a one-point mounting accessory rail. The front sight is a single dot unit that incorporates a luminescent quality that CZ sights are known for, a property that allows the sight to glow in the dark for a short time after being subjected to bright light. While not night sights, this feature is very handy when moving the pistol from a brightly lit area to a not so brightly lit area, if even for a short time. The front sight is nicely integrated into the slide and held in place with a set screw, which means that it can be replaced. Pulling the slide to the rear reveals the 4 inch barrel and full length guide rod. The muzzle of the barrel, as does the FLGR, extends just slightly forward of the slide and frame. Moving to the middle of the slide, 
A nicely formed and cut ejection port ensures a positive means of ridding spent shell casings. Just below the ejection port, on the left side of the slide, the model and caliber of the pistol is there for all to see. Just below the model and caliber, on the frame, is a well-formed and serrated takedown lever that is similar to the Glock system, but much better to find and much easier to use. Just forward of the takedown lever is a textured area where one can rest the trigger finger when it is not within the trigger guard. Just to the rear of the takedown lever, on the left side of the frame, a brief message to remind you that you should read the manual before using the pistol. While on the right side of the frame, you are told that the pistol is manufactured as CZ USA in the city of Kansas in the state of Kansas. Traveling more to the rear of the slide, deeply cut and angled serrations provide an additional gripping surface to rack the slide to chamber a fresh cartridge or for press checking. On the right side of the slide and cut into those serrations is the external extractor that very efficiently extracts those nasty spent cartridges from the chamber that, incidentally, the outside of which contains the serial number and caliber. At the rear of the slide is, of course, the rear sight that is fixed but adjustable for windage by loosening a set screw and sliding it within the slot in the slide. The two dots, as with the front sight dot, also contains the luminescent feature that allows limited viewing of the sights in low light environments. Fully ambidextrous slide lock levers are available for both left and right handed shooters. This is a feature that I truly like, even as a predominantly right handed shooter, because I do like the option of closing or locking the slide open with either hand. Moving downward from the ambidextrous slide lock levers is the fully ambidextrous magazine lock and release button. Again, I like this feature as I can exercise the option to release a magazine with either hand. However, I found that easier to do with the thumb of my shooting hand over using my trigger or middle finger on the right side. Pushing in on the magazine lock and release lever from the right side requires a harder push than does the left side, possibly because the left side button is used more. Since both myself and my son-in-law are right-handers, this actually does not make sense to me since the magazine lock and release lever uses a single spring that is common to the lever. Activating the magazine lock and release lever can be accomplished without a change in grip, being easily accessible by the thumb. I do give the P10C high marks for including the fully ambidextrous controls. Moving forward of the ambidextrous magazine lock and release button, is a very well contoured and spacious trigger guard that will easily accommodate a gloved hand. The trigger guard is undercut at the rear to allow as high a grip on the handle as possible, while it is flat faced at the front with a bit of overhang and with the face mildly serrated to help hold a sport hand index finger should it be placed there. The trigger itself is not all uncommon these days with the middle of the trigger face safety lever preventing the pistol from firing if not pulled fully with the trigger. And speaking of trigger pull, there is a lot of distance to cover when the pistol is in a cocked position. Trigger pull distance, once the safety lever is engaged fully within the trigger face, is approximately one half inch of free travel until resistance is felt. There is a light bit of resistance as the rearward movement of the trigger finishes staging the striker and it is slightly gritty. The break, however, is clean and decisive with no over travel. Reset is very close to the break point and is both audible and tactile. Over a five pole average, the trigger pull weight was two pounds and 15 ounces, about as close to a three pound trigger as one can get. Fast follow up shots are quite possible once you get used to the reset. Just relaxing the trigger finger a bit will get you to the reset point. Trigger distance from the rear of the back strap to the center of the trigger face is two and three quarter inches. To work the trigger, it is handy to have a means of gripping the pistol, which leads me to the grip. 
CZ pistols are well known for how well they fit in the hand, and the P10C is no exception. The grip of the P10C is one of the most pleasing to the hand that I have held, as are all my CZs. The frame extension, what some would call a beaver tail, is more than adequate for getting the high as hand as possible on the grip without the worry of slide bite. The nicely arched rear of the grip hits my hand in all the right places, while the square dot pattern at the rear, sides, and front strap keeps the hand in place on the grip without being overbearing in the hand. The P10C comes with two grip adapters that can customize the grip to most hand sizes. While I prefer a thick grip, this is not my P10C, and I found the installed grip adapter adequate, but not desirable for my hand. Should I ever decide to have a P10C for myself, you can bet that the thickest grip adapter will be installed. A single, very thin pin retains the grip adapters in place. Exchanging grip adapters is very easy, but requires a very small punch to do so. It is also recommended by CZ that after replacement of the backstrap, to also replace the backstrap roll pin. As for grip length, it is long enough to get all of my digits in place with a little finger just resting on the seam between the grip frame and magazine. As a comparison, grip length is comparable to my Glock G19, who would be close to my G23 as well. And to mention, there is a slight palm swell that tapers in at the top and bottom. At the top, the taper is evident and excellent. At the bottom, not so evident. Also, at the bottom of the grip, you will notice a slight sloping of the grip where a magazine is inserted. This assists the operator in removing a magazine, if needed, but usually not. The P10C ships with one 15-round magazine, at least in the states that allow such. That is angled at the top to allow positive feeding and insertion into the nicely beveled magazine well. The magazine is flush fitting and blends well with the pistol when inserted. It also locks up and releases well when told to do so. There is very little chance of finger pinch when inserting the magazine due to the grip's length. Now let me talk finish, fit, and form for just a bit. Given the P10C's overall dimensions, it would appear that the P10C is well balanced in the hand, and it is, even when fully stocked with 15 plus 1 rounds of 9mm ammunition. The slide assembly, of course, contributes to most of the P10C's weight, being that the frame is reinforced polymer. The slide, with its beveled top, reduces the blocky look that it would have without beveling, but by now, folks should be used to this look. The slide blends well with the frame with its finish and appears not to overwhelm the frame when mounted. Very minor side to side movement can be detected with the slide in full battery. While the slide has full length rails, the frame does not, as you will see when I get to the maintenance segment. Comparing the P10C with the standard CZ75, one can see that the slide height is greater than that of the CZ75. A feature that some people will welcome, as the slide height of the CZ75 is a source of discussion, where some dislike it, some like it, and some are on the fence regarding it. For myself, I have no issues with the slide height of the CZ75, nor with the slide height of the P10C. The last thing to be covered, and I am sure that you welcome it, are the safety features of the P10C. The P10C does have a pre cock single action trigger mechanism. Before firing, firing mechanism with striker is partially pre cocked. When the trigger is pulled, it is further cocked and then finally released. After each firing, the trigger must be partially released. To some, this might be regarded as a double action trigger because, in a sense, and by conventional thinking, the sole purpose of a single action trigger is to simply release a hammer, or striker in this case. I am of the latter thought, in this case, and also with a Glock. Two things are happening. The trigger pull completes the cocking of the striker, and the release of the striker. To me, that is double action. 
What really matters is, whatever the system might be, does it work? Yes, it does, and very nicely, I might add. Of safety features, we have the trigger guard that prevents unintentional pressing of the trigger. For example, when the pistol is dropped, or when holstering the pistol. The P10C has a fall safety that minimizes the risk of unwanted firing during improper handling, especially when a loaded pistol falls and there is a risk of firing due to inertia of the firing pin. There is, of course, the now common trigger safety that prevents unwanted movement of the trigger. Unless the trigger safety is deactivated, the trigger cannot be pulled, thus the pistol cannot be fired. A firing pin block prevents movement of the firing pin when the trigger is not pulled. Last but not least is the disconnector. That prevents the pistol from firing when the trigger is pulled, held, and the slide is not in full battery. The safety feature is checked during function testing, which I present in the maintenance segment, and which is coming up right now. With regard to maintenance, begin with a safety check. Always. Disassembling the P10C for maintenance is straightforward. And if you have ever stripped a Glock, you will find no difference in doing so with the P10C. After the safety check is complete, hold the slide firmly while pushing the slide lock lever, either one, down to release the slide. Allow the slide to go slowly in the battery while attempting to pull the trigger every one half inch or so. The trigger should not release the striker until the slide is fully in the battery. This checks the disconnector operation. The trigger must be pulled to disassemble the P10C. Since you have done that with the disconnector check, pull the slide ever so slightly to the rear. About one quarter of an inch will do. Pull down on the slide release levers. You will feel the slide release from its locked position. Separate the slide and frame assemblies. Turn the slide so that the internal components are facing up. Push the captivated guide rod assembly slightly forward to remove tension from the barrel. Lift and remove the captivated guide rod from the pistol. Remove the barrel from the pistol. The disassembly for routine maintenance is now complete. For cleaning and lubricating of the pistol, I am simply going to refer you to the instruction manual that is provided with the pistol or the one that you can download from the CZ USA website. While not extensive in nature, it will provide you with the basic cleaning of the pistol. Since I have the P10C disassembled, this would be an opportune time to take a look at the interior of the pistol. The first thing you will notice is how robust the slide and frame appear. Indeed, the slide shows nary a machining mark and a 1 pound 0.6 ounces of the fully assembled slide indicates that the slide assembly is what gives the pistol the majority of its weight. The full length captivated guide rod exhibits a flat wound recoil spring and also a floating base that helps keep the guide rod aligned properly during recoil. The 4 inch barrel is of the John Moses Browning tilting barrel locking design and exhibits excellent cartridge case base support. You won't experience any case bulging with this barrel as can be witnessed with Glock barrels and some others. The barrel locks up forward of the chamber and it does lock up very well. The front insert or locking block assembly is held into place with one pin. The front insert pin that also serves as the trigger pivot point. 
The locking block assembly is well embedded in the frame for maximum strength. The frame is just as robust as the slide. While the frame does not have full length rails, as does the CZ75, the rails are all steel. The trigger bar is thick and well formed, as is the ambidextrous slide stop assembly. Everything about the trigger is tucked in nice and tight. Now that you have had a look at the interior, let's say we put the P10C back together. Assembling the pistol is actually as easy as the disassembly. Insert the barrel into the pistol from the rear. Ensure that it is locked into place. Insert the captivated guide rod. The swivel base fits in the slot in the barrel lug. Ensure that the captivated guide rod is centered within the slide. Assemble the slide and frame. Push or pull the slide to the rear until you hear the slide lock into place. View the slide release levers as you install the slide onto the frame. You will see them move down as the slide passes over the locking point and then move up when the slide is fully captured by the slide release mechanism. Cycle the slide several times to check for smooth operation. Push or pull the slide to the rear and lock it open with the slide lock lever. The pistol is now ready for a function check. As my normal, I use several snap caps for checking functions like extraction, ejection, and to provide something soft for the striker to strike against. Install a couple of snap caps into a magazine and then install the magazine into the pistol. Cycle the slide as you normally would to chamber around. The first snap cap will chamber. Press the trigger without pressing the trigger safety. The trigger should not enter the frame thus preventing the release of the striker. Press the trigger while engaging the trigger safety. The striker will be released. Push or pull the slide completely to the rear and hold. The first snap cap should be extracted and ejected. Release the slide to chamber the next snap cap. Cycle the slide as many times as needed to extract and eject any remaining snap caps. The slide will lock back on the empty magazine. The function check is now completed. If any function check fails, seek out a competent gunsmith, as the pistol is unsafe to fire. Now, what say I take this happy little pistol and my happy little behind to my happy place, the range. Coming in at number one of the polymer frame 9mm compact pistols that I have handled thus far, I was eager to see how well the CZ P10C performed in my hands. Based on my experience with my CZ75 pistols, it would be interesting to see if it had the same reliability and accuracy as the CZ75. With both, 9mm, 115 grain, and 124 grain FMJ ammunition on hand, and a few defensive loads in the back pocket, I'll pick up on the shooting, let you know what ammunition is being shot, and make comments along the way.
With regard to the design, CZ pistols are inherently reliable. Sans human errors, P10C should run reliably right out of the box once the right combination of ammunition is fully tested. For the most part, the ergonomics of this gun are excellent. Even if it doesn't fit your hands well right out of the box, those interchangeable back straps can be used to adjust your grip. If the texturing could be done a bit differently, I think that the P10C would find its way into a lot of people's hands. Some would find the grip texture too aggressive. For me, I find it mildly aggressive. The sights are fantastic and draw the eye well enough to make acquiring targets for follow-up shots faster. The CZ Trigger has a bit more take-up than some other polymer pistols, but does have a smoother pull overall. It has a clean break and relatively short reset. Running this trigger for rapid fire is easily accomplished. Trigger reach is good, but slightly short for my hands after it resets. I find myself moving my trigger finger further forward than is necessary, but that's not the fault of the gun. For me, the sweet spot is the first joint of my finger, where any lateral movement while pulling the trigger is minimized. It is simply a very short, straight back pull. The slide stop is ambidextrous, as is the mag release. As I am a right-handed operator, reaching the left side controls is easily done without changing my grip. To operate the right hand controls will take some grip shifting to perform if you are right-handed. As for the slide, it racks smoothly and simply. Something I like is the way CZ undercut the trigger guard at the rear, a feature that allows me to take a firmer, higher grip on the gun. The arch of the rear of the grip is a feature that feels good in my hand, while the grip angle works well for me. The P10C is a very precise pistol. In fact, in accuracy, it outperforms my current capabilities with it. If you want a pistol that is capable of very small groups, and if you can do your part, and one that can maintain its accuracy at longer distances, P10C might just be the pistol for you. Overall, I give the P10C a 4 out of 5 rating. For me, that long distance that the trigger must travel before engaging resistance is bothersome. With that said, more trigger time with the P10C just might change my mind. The history of CZ starts in 1919, right after the end of the First of World Wars. CZ was focused on the gun industry and related military equipment since the very beginning. It was in 1936, with the establishment of a brand new factory, that CZ became known worldwide for its production of small arms. Today, the Kansas City, Kansas-based CZ USA is responsible for the importation and distribution of CZ products in the United States, also designs and imports the company's field sports lines of shotguns from Turkey, while it also owns and operates Dan Wesson Firearms, which is based in Norwich, New York. While the CZ-75 line of pistols became darlings of the pistol world, known for their reliability and accuracy, the CZ P10 series brought to the table a new breed of polymer based striker fired pistols to compete with today's marketplace of such. Before the P10, there was the P01, a scaled down all metal version of the CZ 75, and it replaced the CZ 75 as the Czech National Police Sidearm. It was inevitable for the company to produce polymer frame pistols as the demand grew for them, 
and if there are shining examples of CZ produced polymer frame pistols, P10F, P10C, and P10S would be them. With the heritage of the CZ75 before them, the P10 family of pistols are very pleasing to the hand, extremely pleasing in performance, and favored by many over the Glock 9mm line pistols, or for that matter, other lines of polymer frame pistols. With its fully shootable adaptive features, such as all ambidextrous controls, its performance, excellent sights out of the box, and its natural feel in the hand, I am hard pressed to come up with reasons not to carry the P10C. The CZ P10C is one of those firearms that, in my opinion, would both satisfy the requirements of the most ardent operators and fill the needs for a neophyte shooter to enter the world of handgun shooting. With that, I'm going to take my leave of this chapter in my pistol series, with the thought that I will hopefully see you again for my other gun and gear reviews. So, until that time, be vigilant, be armed, and be safe out there.